Once you have done your basic editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, you may want to notch up your video with different transitions other than just straight cuts. You may also want to stylize your video with filters and effects, like lens flares and cinematic looks, and even stabilize handheld footage. To follow along, copy the files that accompany this tutorial to your Creative Cloud account. Before we jump into applying a transition, it's important to understand handles. Simply put, handles are extra footage before a clip's in point and after a clip's out point. When you apply a transition, the effect needs a little bit of overlapping frames to cover the time it takes to, say, dissolve out of the first clip and into the second clip. If you have already marked in and out points on a clip, it's likely that it will have some amount of handles. If not, you may need to trim the head or tail of a clip by 15 to 30 frames to provide you with enough overlapping frames. You can visually tell if a clip on your timeline has any extra frames available or if you have used up every last frame of the original footage. Little white triangles in the upper corners are an indication that the clip on the timeline is using all the frames. This means you don't have any handles to cover your transition. Take note, you will never see white triangles on photos, because still images can always be extended. Here are two clips with plenty of handles. To apply the transition, go to the Effects panel, which is located in the lower left quadrant near the Project tab and Media Browser tab. If the panel group is too narrow to show the Effects panel, you can also click on the right side of the panel group to reveal the drop-down menu and quickly select it. Here you will find both audio and video transitions, and also filters. If you click on the Disclosure Triangle next to the Transitions folder, you will see all the transitions are organized into more folders by category, Dissolves, Wipes, and so on. Under Dissolves, you'll find the Cross Dissolve. This is the standard video dissolve. To apply this transition, simply drag it onto the edit point, the cut line between the two clips and release your mouse when you see the cursor's icon change. Let's play back our dissolve. You can change the duration of a transition after you've applied it to an edit point directly in your timeline. To make things easier, you may want to zoom in on your timeline. Use the plus key on your keyboard or the slider below the sequence. Grab the edge of the transition to expand or shorten it. A pop-up will tell you how much you have changed it and its new duration. You can also just right-click on the transition to change its duration, or remove it. I'll change this dissolve to exactly two seconds. You can easily replace an existing transition with a different transition by just dragging and dropping a new one on top of it. The new one will assume the duration of the transition it replaces. I'm going to replace this dissolve with a slide transition. Now, many transitions can be modified. In this case, the direction of the slide, borders, colors, and so on. To modify a transition, click on the transition in the timeline and open the Effect Controls tab adjacent to the Source Monitor. You will see all of the controls available to customize the transition. This top bar represents the first or outgoing clip, and the bottom bar is the second or incoming clip. If you can see the edge of a bar, that's where your footage ends, and so do your handles. The transition is represented by the rectangular box between the two bars. By grabbing it, I can easily change the position, timing, and duration of the transition. I can also modify how this slide transition looks and acts. In this case, adding a thicker border and reversing the direction of the split. Let's play the updated slide transition. If you want to reuse your newly customized transition, select it in the timeline, copy it, Command or Control C, and paste it onto another edit point with Command or Control V. Applying a filter to a clip is much the same as applying a transition, except you don't have to worry about handles. There is a special workspace that makes working with effects easy. You can find it at the top of the interface, near the workspace for editing. To switch to this workspace, just click on the word Effects. 
What's nice about this layout is everything you need is just a mouse click away. The effects panel is now easily accessible on the right side, and the effect controls tab is open on the left side. A great feature that is automatically enabled is that whenever you move your playhead over a clip in the timeline, the effect controls for that clip are automatically loaded. If you want, you can toggle this feature on and off in any workspace. Go under the Sequence menu and check Selection Follows Playhead. From the Effects tab, which is now located on our right, we can choose a video effect. These are also sorted into subfolders. However, you can easily and quickly find any effect simply by typing its name into the search box at the top of the panel. Let's find Gaussian Blur. To apply a filter, drag and drop the effect directly onto a clip. Or, if the clip is already selected in the timeline, simply double-click the effect name in the Effects tab and it will be applied to that selected clip. As you can see, the Applied effect appears in the Effect Controls tab. Let's modify the effect. I can adjust the amount of blur by moving the slider. Or, just type in a number. To temporarily turn off an effect, click the FX button to the left of its name. To completely remove an effect, select it and press Delete. You can animate any applied effect so that its properties change over time. You do this with keyframes. If you know how to zoom in on a photo or pan across it, you know about keyframes. You can apply the same knowledge to modify an effect over time. Back in the Effects tab, there is a folder called Lumetri Presets. Here you will find a boatload of effects called Looks that you can apply to your video. Cinematic, film stocks, monochrome, and so on. When you click on any of the looks, you will see a small image representing how that look looks. If you hover your mouse over the Effects tab and press the Oxon Grav key, that's the little downward slant key in the upper left corner of your keyboard, that panel toggles to full screen, making it easier to see all of the sample images in each of the Lumetri preset categories. Press the Accent Grav key again to return to your original layout. By the way, this full screen toggle works on any panel in Premiere Pro that your mouse is hovering over, including the timeline. Let's choose the monochrome punch look located under Lumetri Presets, Monochrome, and animate it so our video transitions from a stylized black and white image to a color image. As you can see in the Effect Controls tab, there are a lot of parameters I could modify. For this animation, I only need to change two parameters located under the Creative Disclosure Triangle, Intensity and Saturation. Position your playhead at the point where you want the effect to start to transition from black and white to color. Click on the stopwatches next to Intensity and next to Saturation to create the first set of keyframes. Now let's move the playhead to the point where you want the effect to be gone, so the image is full color. Change the Intensity value to 0 and the Saturation value from 0 to 100. As you can see, as I adjust these two settings, new keyframes are created. Let's play back our animation and see how it looks. If I want to change the timing, I can simply drag the keyframes to the left or right, that's earlier or later, in the Effect Controls tab. Let's add a second filter on this clip, the Lens Flare. It looks fine in the color part of the clip, but not so much over the black and white look at the beginning of the clip. You can reorder filters the same way you reorder layers in Photoshop. Simply click on the filter's name and drag it into the order you want. An effect that is very useful for DSLR photographers is the Warp Stabilizer. There are times when you need to shoot handheld or you don't have a tripod, but you still need your shot to be smooth. Here are two shots that really put this filter to the test. These are handheld out the open door of a helicopter. So in addition to the vibration of the helicopter, there was a lot of wind pushing the camera. I will apply the warp stabilizer to both clips at once. I'll select them both 
and then double click the filter. Now in the effects control tab, we'll see that Premiere Pro is analyzing the motion, which can happen in the background while I continue to edit. I can also adjust how much smoothing I want applied to the video. Once it finishes analyzing the clip, it'll automatically stabilize it. Let's play the clips back. Much smoother. For a little better perspective, I've created a split screen with the original footage on the left and the stabilized footage on the right. Here is another handheld clip that would benefit from the warp stabilizer. In this case, I don't just want smooth motion, I want no motion. Again, once the clip's motion is analyzed, Premiere Pro will stabilize the clip. Here is a split screen of the clip. One side is the stabilized version and the other the original handheld version. There you go. That's how you apply transitions, filters, and effects to your video in Premiere Pro.